Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. All right, happy Friday, everybody. Yay. The weekend's just around the corner. Very, very close. At least yeah, for us, we made is. it. We made it. We got through it. But we got a lot coming up on the show, including our question of the day with Christmas shopping. Of course, the Christmas craft fair is here this weekend. We were out there earlier in. Man, that was that it was, was full. Yeah, it was very busy. If you want to go get your Christmas shopping done in one place, that's where you're going to do it. It was uh, very cool to see. I've never been there before. Yeah, so this it is was my really awesome. This is my second time, but come early for better parking. That's all I can <laughs> yeah, say. Yeah, we ended up parking fairly far away, but it's definitely worth going to. And uh, we've got a story on that later on. Yes, today. we do. Yeah. And we'll have a lot more local news and other stories coming up later in the show. But right now, let's send it over to Brett Holden, who's out at Cold Lake this evening. I'm here at the Imperial Oil Place Arena, where tonight the Cold Lake Wings will take on the West Sound Admirals from Bremerton, Washington. Both teams coming off uh, different results from uh, the last two games, where uh, West Sound won their last game 8-4 uh, to four against Meadow Lake, and Cold Lake won or lost their game 11-4 to four last night against Seattle. It will be a little bit of a different tilt tonight, but coming up we're going to talk to some of the coaches and some players on each end. But first, let's head back into the studio and see what's going on with them. And Christmas arrived early here in the Border City as the Christmas Craft Fair rolls into the exhibition grounds. This weekend at the Lloyd Exhibition Grounds, you will be able to get all your holiday shopping done in one place as the Christmas Craft Fair celebrates its 30th anniversary. For somebody who's never been, it's definitely worth checking out. Um, the entry fee to get in is just five bucks. Kids 12 and under are free. Uh, we have approximately 350 booths at the show, so it takes up the entire Lloyd Minster Exhibition Grounds. It's the hugest show in the Midwest. It's an opportunity for local businesses to showcase all that they have to offer. Anything from jewelry to home gadgets will be found at the fair this weekend. Delia has been attending the fair as a vendor for 10 years. It's all about sales here, yes, at the show, but it also encourages business back at um, my location here in Lloydminster. So, um, and it's a lot of exposure. You see a lot of people from, you know, Edgerton, the surrounding areas, you know, coming here. Um, I know, I think it was 10,000 people they said come through here. So it's huge exposure. Um, to promote your business, but also sales. The fair is open all weekend and ends Sunday at 4 p.m. The ugly Christmas sweaters are making an appearance with the Lloydminster Interval Home Society. Open to the whole community, the Interval Home Society is encouraging people to pick a day to wear your ugly Christmas sweater, take a picture, and upload it to the Interval Home Society's Facebook page and use the hashtag RockYourUglySweater for LIH. Everyone, is, everyone who participates individually donates $10 to the Interval Home. I think it's just a fun way to, um, one, help a great organization and to, you know, create that, that fun in your group or your, your staff and uh, just have some fun with it. So we are hoping that lots of people will come on board and, and want to participate and support the Lloydminster Interval Home. If you don't have an ugly Christmas sweater but would like to participate, you can stop at an Interval Home store and buy one or you can also come down and decorate your own and the event closes on December 22nd. And a cancer survivor in Fort Saskatchewan is finding a way to give back to those fighting cancer through some East Coast hospitality. Laura Elliott was in the midst of planning her wedding when she was diagnosed with cancer, just weeks apart from her mother's diagnosis. Knowing the costs faced by patients who have to travel for treatment, she's offering room in her Fort Saskatchewan home to those in need. And them dealing with cancer alone is enough stress on a family or a member, so we're trying to just to take tough stress and financial burden off each, each individual. Elliot says that there is too few accommodations for cancer patients and that they are often charged people hoping to use them. She's currently registering her accommodations with the Cross Cancer Institute for patients to access just 30 minutes away. And now we're going to send it back to Brett Holden who is live in Cold Lake. I'm here with head coach Jonathan Aitken of the Cold Lake Wings. And last night, Jonathan, 11 to 4 loss, uh, a tough uh, six goal third period. Can you just kind of talk about uh, that third last 20 minutes? Not much to talk about. Uh, you know, for 40 minutes, we played what we wanted to play. We're, you know, we're short handed uh, personnel wise, a few injuries here and there. So. Yeah, going into the third period, yeah, you know, even you're down by one at home, you had some momentum. Uh, you had a good second period, 
and yeah, it, it, it wasn't something that we wanted to do, you know, get, giving up a goal within 20 seconds. So it just a snowball effect. The guys lost uh, our tactical forecheck essentially, and uh, they just lost all, all, all confidence, and it was tough to regain that. So heading into tonight, what's kind of some things that uh, you can do to kind of prevent that uh, kind of falling out there? Just, just you know, don't get out work. You know, I've only asked two things of the guys this year, and that's be on time and work hard. Uh, whatever, if we can work hard, those are things that we can control. Uh, the bounces and, and whatever else, the referees, the other team, we can't control that. As long as we go in there and, and try and work as hard as we can, win our one-on-one battles and play our position, I think we'll be okay. Beautiful. Well, coming up in a little bit, we're going to be talking to some of the players of the Cold Lake Wings and see how they're getting ready for tonight's game. But first, we're going to head back into the studio and see what's going on with them. All right, thank you very much, Brett. Taking a look currently for us here in the border city, minus 18 degrees with some cloudy skies. Of course, it was much colder today than it was yesterday, but it will get a little bit warmer heading into the next couple days. Of course, we'll have your seven day forecast coming up a little bit later. Just want to take a look at some records for this time of year. Plus 12 in 2009 and minus 22 back in 19. 96. The wind's still there, making it a little bit colder than expected. If we take a look at the satellite radar map. We do have some cloud coverage that was here earlier today. Of course, it did kind of get there were some sunny breaks throughout the day, and it will be more so in the Vegerville and uh, Vermilion Marwain areas there. No watches or warnings to report right now. Of course, yesterday there was that snowfall warning way out west. But uh, we're, as of today right now, no warnings really to report. If you take a look at some temperatures right now, minus 18 for us here in the border city, minus 18 in North Battleford and Meadow Lake and Prince Albert as in Saskatoon. Take a look over at the Alberta side, minus 13 in Whitecourt, minus 12 in Red Deer, minus 10 in Rocky Mountain House, and minus 14 out in Edmonton. Now the roads are a little bit cautious over heading closer to Edmonton, but leaving Lloydminster. If you are traveling, make sure you check the road reports, make sure that they are clear to go. There still, still could be some some snow coverage on them from the snow that we got last night. As we take a look at some regional temperatures now, overnight in North Battleford, minus 19 with mostly clear skies. Tomorrow, minus 8 with some sunny cl sudden cloud mix there, but the wind's still going to make it feel a little bit colder than minus 8, so closer to minus 15 or maybe even closer to minus 20. Taking a look at Cold Lake, minus 16 overnight with some cloudy skies. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with some sun coming up, uh, minus 8 for tomorrow in the daytime with some sun with uh, some wind coming in from the west southwest so it feels a little bit colder than minus eight for us here in the border city minus 18 overnight tomorrow gets a little bit warmer at minus seven with mostly sun and a little bit of cloud coverage there but again it's that uh, wind that's going to make it feel a little bit colder than usual and take a look at the next three days minus three on sunday with a 70 percent chance of snow and zero on monday with sunny and cloudy skies we'll have more primetime news weather and more coming up by later Welcome back. Well, getting a handle on a rowdy marketplace is critical to knowing when to sell your grain. Gerard Lampau meets a tech technical analyst who tunes out the noise. So I learned real quickly that reading what was put out there was not working for this guy. David so Droz, the started Ag Chief 16 years ago and holds firm to his charts about the markets. The Winnipeg grain marketing firm specializes in charting and technical analysis. He says there are two ways to look at the markets. One way is to do fundamental analysis, study of supply and demand. And, you know, a fundamental analyst, you know, believes that it's the news that causes the prices to move. Us technical analysts, we look at it a little bit differently. We would prefer to ignore the news or call it the noise and look at a chart and the past performance of what a chart does often can predict future performance. Drozd says as a technical analyst, it's the price action that brings out the news at the end of the day, so he sticks to charting, but he does not discount the fundamental analysis which comes from world events. The longer it takes for uh, President Donald Trump and China to come to some kind of resolution with respect to uh, you know, the tariffs on the soybeans, um, if this were to drag on to say February, March, when the South American soybean crop becomes available, that again is gonna put pressure on the oilseed markets. 
He says marketing is about picking your battles. Selling grain when a market rallies up into resistance, uh, you know, you're technically overbought and we may see a sell signal on the charts. Back to his current analysis, as canola has been trending lower, Droz says the January futures contract is down $4.80 a ton. He draws a horizontal line connecting the lows over the past few years and calls it the line of support. It's important for canola to hold here at 480 and start to turn back up. If support at 480 or 475 fails to hold, you get a decisive close down under those levels, it could open up the door to additional weakness. Droz is hopeful for the next selling opportunity to be the seasonal rally in January. Gerard Lampau, Primetime Local News. The University of Saskatchewan researchers are looking into what can be done to reduce greenhouse gas emissions on farms. The federal government is spending $3.4 million on three studies, and one will explore strategies for improving the nutritional value of grazed forages. And another will study carbon sequestration strategies using agroforestry shelter belt systems in Saskatchewan, including the idea of planting more trees in the south. The third project will look minimizing greenhouse gas emissions associated with keeping water in on land in agriculture reservoirs. That is for it for our agriculture news. Sports is next, but first we'll take a look at those egg prices. Every member of the City Centre Autobody team has been through extensive training. We're constantly upgrading our team's education to reflect current collision repair technique. Switching over to your local sports now, both Lloydminster junior hockey teams have important games this weekend. The Bobcats head out to their uh, head out on the on the road first uh, for their first road trip uh, under new coach Nigel Dubé. While the Bandits are on the road tonight in Vermilion at eight and back home on Sunday against Bakerville at 2:30, the Bobcats are in Drayton Valley tonight and White Court tomorrow. Both games starting at 7:30. Switching over to volleyball now, the Lloyd Comp Barons men's volleyball team began their first Saskatchewan Provincial competition in Prince Albert this afternoon. While the Holy Rosary Raiders volleyball teams are in Lac La Biche for Alberta 3A zone qualifying. Both teams played Holy Trinity from Fort McMurray and St. Paul this afternoon and are playing Father Mac uh, this evening. And the Lloydminster uh, Lloyd football squads rather, are on the road this weekend for their Tier 3 and Tier 2 regional finals, looking to return with their respective championship games. The Raiders are in St. Albert to play the third-ranked Skyhawks after a dominant victory in Sylvan Lake. And the Barons, after narrowly surviving their semifinal, travel to Grand Prairie this afternoon, where they will play St. Joseph's and the number two team in Tier 2. Both games are at 1 p.m. And the wrestlers volleyball teams have their second last weekend of ACAC season before Christmas, taking on the Kings University College Eagles. For the women, it's the most anticipated matchup of the season, featuring two undefeated squads ranked second and eighth in the country. The Eagles are a tall physical team with multiple transfer players from college and university, averaging more than 12 kills per set, which is a league best. They're a lot bigger than us, so I think we'll have to work on a lot of quick transition and stuff like that, uh, in the middle especially, but um, probably just focusing a lot on our side as well. Lakeland's defense is key to the matchup, which was already tested last weekend against the Kieno Huskies. They put a lot of pressure on us. We were at a system uh, a good portion of the game, and you know we were struggling getting the ball into zones uh, to to get give our hitters open looks, but uh, you know we're. We're an old veteran team and we're, we're steady. The men's match appears more lopsided with the Eagles winless this season, but Coach Taylor Dreyer is expecting a tough test. The ACAC is just way too tough of a conference for us to take anyone for granted. And, and I think Kings is going to be playing with a little bit of urgency. They, they need to get on the board here. and um, So they're going to come gunning and they're, gonna, they're a good team. The men get underway following the conclusion of the women's match. Tomorrow, the wrestlers are back in Lloydminster with gameplay starting at 6 p.m. 
And the wrestlers basketball teams are also taking on the Eagles this evening at Lakeland, looking to make up ground in the standings. Lakeland sits one win ahead of both Eagles squads, who are looking for their first victory over the wrestlers in three years. Women's tip-off is at six, with the men following at eight. And now we're going to send it back to Brett Holden, who is live at Cold Lake. I'm joined now by Brendan Culbertson, goaltender for the Cold Lake Wings. And uh, tonight, 7.30, you guys have a big game against uh, the West Sound Admirals. What do you know about this team? I know you guys haven't played them yet, but what do you know? Um, I know they like to get pucks deep. They play a chippier style of game, and we just have to be ready for that and answer back with some of our own. So you guys have three wins on the season. You have all three. Unfortunately, not starting tonight. But what's something that you can kind of say to, to your goalie who is starting tonight to kind of end your team uh, to get ready for tonight's game? Uh, we just got to stay positive and be sharp throughout all 60 minutes of the game tonight. And uh, just really stay mentally in the game. So with having these uh, four games against the, the American team so far, uh, you do have a couple more coming up, but uh, how has this experience been for you guys and or for you and the team as well? Uh, it's been all right. I mean, would have liked to win a few, but um, playing a different style of game, playing different teams is always good. Say, prepares for Vegas that comes up in December. I asked your coach this question as well. Uh, you guys had a tough breakdown during uh, the third period last night. It was a 5-4 game heading into the third against the Seattle Totems, but uh, just unfortunately had a breakdown. Six goals in the third period. Uh, unfortunately, you were thrown into that game. Uh, what, what do you have to do to uh, get ready for tonight's game? Um, really, I think we just have to be better all around and just come prepared to win this one and give it everything. We got nothing, nothing to hold back for. These are must-win games. So when you see a breakdown like that and getting ready for a team that you've never even seen, um, kind of, could you talk about some of the preventions for uh, defensively for your team? Um, defensively, I think we just have to stay, stay with our guys, stay and be aware of where everybody is and where the puck is on the on the ice. Perfect. So coming up, we'll be talking to another one of the Cold Lake Wings uh, players. But first, let's head back into the studio and see what's going on with them. All right. Thanks very much, Brett. Taking a look at some current temperatures right now. Minus 18s across the board for most part uh, in Lloydminster and uh, out in North Battleford. Minus 15 in Maidstone and Vermilion. Now, if you are traveling, to Maidstone from Lloydminster, there are some slippery icy conditions and if you are heading out west towards Edmonton, there are some slippery roads out there with a lot of drifting snow. So make sure you take caution, check those road reports if you're heading out of town for the weekend. Minus 18 in Mar Wayne, minus 18 in Vegreville, minus 16 in Wainwright, minus 15 down in Provost and Macklin and in Edmonton, it's minus 14. Again, just keep an eye on those road reports if you are heading out of town this weekend. Uh, take a look at some other temperatures, minus 16 in Fort McMurray as well as Peace River, minus 18 in high level for Chippewa, minus 15, minus 17 down in Grand Prairie as we switch over to Saskatchewan, minus 15 across the board in Stony Rapids, Laloche and Buffalo Narrows, and minus 17 in La Ronge, Flin Flon, and South End. And taking a look down south, minus 15 in Swift Current and Moose Jaw, minus 13 in Regina, minus 11 out in Estevan, Kindersley getting minus 16, minus 10 in, all, in, the Leth in Lethbridge, minus 12 in Medicine Hat, minus 11 in Calgary, and minus 9 in Banff. Southern parts of Saskatchewan are on very very icy conditions as I just checked the Saskatchewan road reports there. So if you are heading down south there, make sure you take precaution or you check it and make sure you maybe wait till later on, earlier on to tomorrow. Take a look at tomorrow's temperatures. It is going to get a little bit warmer. Minus 7 in Lloydminster, minus 7 in Maidstone, minus 6 in Vermilion, minus 8 in Cold Lake, Bonneville, St. Paul and Pierceland, minus 4 out in Edmonton. So a much warmer day out there. Let's take a look at the seven day forecast right now. Minus three on Sunday, zero on Monday, one on Tuesday, minus one Wednesday, minus one again on Thursday, but there's a 55% chance of precipitation and minus four on Friday, closer to 55%, closer to 45 or close to 50% chance of some snow that we're going to get. Now they are really low temperatures right now, but the wind chill is going to make it feel a little bit more like in the double digits as we are heading to overnight tonight. It'll feel more closer to minus 30 degrees, so make sure that you are bundled up and make sure if you have if you have to make sure you plug your vehicles in it could be a very cold one over the next couple days we'll have more primetime local news after the break 
and now we're going to send it back to Brett Holden, who is live from Cold Lake. I'm joined now with Elias Okamau, a forward for the Cold Lake Wings. Now, uh, tonight you guys are facing uh, some tough competition uh, with being from them being from the States. Uh, what do you expect for tonight? Uh, I expect a good game between both teams. Uh, we just got to come out, skate hard, work hard, full, full, full 60, and yeah. So uh, last night, uh, it, it's been, we've been talking a lot about uh, your guys' night. It was a tough third period, but for you, you had three, three of the four goals for uh, the Wings. Uh, what did you guys, what did you see out there that, that uh, kind of came to your, uh, your favor? Uh, just uh, the bounces came, came my way. Somehow the puck ended up on my stick and I just put the puck in the back of the net. So uh, these teams are from the States, but uh, for you, playing against American teams is, is nothing new. You, uh, you played for a powerhouse state or in a powerhouse state. Uh, can you kind of talk about your time down in Michigan? Uh, it was a pretty good time. Uh, a lot of good competition down there. A lot of good teams. Good, good forwards over there too. And yeah. Can you talk about some of the 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 things that you learned from uh, playing down there? You're from Spruce Grove, but uh, I mean, it, Spruce Grove is far away from Michigan. And hockey in Spruce Grove is definitely much different in Michigan. Can you talk about what you learned and what you you've applied here? Uh, just the different skill set they have down there. Uh, the systems they play is different from over here too. Uh, the coaching's different also, so yeah. Perfect, and really quickly, what do you kind of expect for tonight's game against uh, West Sound? Uh, I don't know, we just gotta play full 60, come ready to play. We gotta stick to the system here, and uh, hopefully the win will come our way. Perfect. So uh, we will be back in a little bit talking to uh, some of the players as well and some personnel from the league. But first, let's head back into the studio and see what's going on with them. Well, even though it's not December, it's still technically Christmas season. It's always that kind of time, or this time, it always is fair enough to say this time of year after Remembrance Day where people celebrate and start shopping, yeah, maybe they're earlier. Preparing. They're definitely preparing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we asked on social media, have you started your Christmas shopping? And all I, all that we got was a lot of them was a lot of yeses, a few no's, but this comment really stuck out to me. Uh, this woman wrote, nope, we don't buy gifts. We usually draw names and make a gift for that person, and there's a limit on what we can spend on supplies for that That's gift. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. Uh, my family kind of does, kind of does something similar. We have a really big family, so we end up just drawing a name and then kind of picking a budget for that because to buy for everybody would just, it would be yeah, out It's of overwhelming Yeah, well. it would be very daunting to I have to buy for everyone. Yeah. I mean, I do buy for my mom and dad, my sister, and then I yep. do, I only don't, I don't do my friends very often, but my best friend and I, we, we do gifts every year we kind of were like hey you know do you yeah. want to do gifts this year and we're like yeah and then we kind oh, of yeah. know what we want I mean yeah so that's pretty good my pretty friends simple. do not buy for each other we we know that we look we love each other and that's it we've got too that's, much stuff to have to that's buy good for, enough so. just the yeah. love is love is exactly, the gift. Love is the exactly. Gift. well <laughs> well it's that time of the show where we showcase your pets on this week's this day edition of pet of the day of course we're going to be naming our winner later on this is bullet submitted cute. by brandy he's sitting up properly he's a got little human name. he is yeah very cute indeed very adorable little pup there. Uh, take a look at Mr. Morty, submitted by Aaron. This cat is, this kitten is very, very adorable, just all spread out, looking mm. happy as well. This is Aiko. This was submitted by John. Aww. John also said it, he, she's going to be one year old Aww. in December, so she's still Early a pup. birthday. Very <laughs> cute indeed. Uh, next, we have Bear, submitted by Cindy. Aww. He's very adorable. Look at very him. Sweet. Nice color on him, though. And last but not least, this is Ray. I couldn't fit <laughs> most of it on there, but she's just got the party hat on. She's yep. ready to go. Submitted by Tara. If your pet was shown, you could enter. You could be winning the gift card that we're going to be giving away in the second hour of primetime local news. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad.
Welcome back. Uh, Josh here with Sclapper. I like just using that word more than anything else. Um, Ryan Sklapsky in studio with us, and we want to talk now about college sports. Um, busy weekend again. Not the greatest weekend for our basketball teams, uh, going one and three uh, last weekend in uh, Keanu. But the volleyball teams continue to roll along here. Men, uh, the first team to take the Keanu Huskies to five sets, and the women's team remaining undefeated. Uh, possible three-peat in, in store for them here. What have you seen from them so far this season? Uh, well, Coach Austin Dyer has the girls rolling, just like year in, year out. Uh, number 50 year players that are leading the squad on the, on the court, and uh, going to the game Saturday, they dropped the first set, and you could see that was a bit of an eye-opener. A lot of the girls aren't used to losing in the manner in which they did. Uh, it was a lot of unforced errors, some serving mistakes, uh, but they cleaned things up in the second set and dominated, and then third and fourth set they pulled away. And then Coach Taylor Dyer has his guys rolling too. I mean, they're off to probably one of their best starts since Taylor's taken over the program, and it's kudos to the guys that are buying into what, sh to what uh, Taylor's preaching in practice, and they're seeing positive results now. Yeah, and the Taylor Dyer's squad hasn't made the playoffs in his tenure yet, but they've slowly built up the program to now where they have a few veteran guys that have played together for a couple of seasons, and they've had a uh, team culture change of sorts. Um, now they have guys who've been dedicated to the weight room and uh, have continuity on the court, and that's something they just simply haven't had the last few years. Yeah, last couple of years they get one or, one or two guys come in, they stay for a year or two, and then they're off to CIS somewhere. So having that continuity, having guys that are familiar with what Taylor's preaching and going through in practice and game planning is, is helping out the younger guys, and, and the younger guys are following the older guys, and, and like we said before, Taylor's seeing really good results, and it'll just be a matter of sustaining it through the rest of the season, hopefully get that playoff berth that they've been itching to get and the program's been itching to get for men's volleyball. Yeah, absolutely, and they still have uh, a few games left this semester. They play the King's University College Eagles Saturday evening. Uh, that should be a good match. And then they end the season with uh, two more matches against the Augustana Vikings both at home. Now, really quickly, just to touch on basketball, um, we were expecting bigger campaigns, certainly, from both the men's and women's teams. They're both under 500 at the moment. Is that some, maybe just expectations a little too high, or just uh, a lot of new players and pieces struggling to kind of get their chemistry at this point? I think chemistry is a little bit. I mean, speaking first, I guess, with Sheree's team with the men's side, they're hosting provincials, right? They, uh, being under 500 this early in the year was probably not something on his radar. And then, I guess, with the women's basketball team with Coach King and, and his ladies, again, they haven't been under 500 in a number of years. They're used to being in that top upper echelon in the women's basketball standings and kind of being at the bottom and looking up at everybody is, is something new for a lot of those girls in the program. They're not used to it, right? So a lot of it will be, you know, kind of digging in here. They got some time off here and, and hitting the gym and practicing hard and trying to develop some of those good habits and try and turn their seasons around. And uh, really quickly before we go, it's less than a minute left, uh, just want to talk quickly about uh, PMW Steelers. So quick plug, go for it. Yeah, uh, Project PJ, it's uh, something the AAA Midget girls are doing, the Bantam girls are doing, the Bantam Bobcats are doing, a number of the elite teams are doing it for Project PJ where we're collecting uh, PJs at home games. Uh, some big things on the line, so uh, Friday home game, Sunday home game for the Bantams, feel free to come on out and uh, bring some PJs. Awesome. I hope everyone does, in fact, bring those PJs. I'll be bringing mine, and uh, we'll have more on prime time after this. Hey, what's going on? It's Pete Jackson from Boom 95.3, and here's what's happening. We're going to look forward to the end of the month as the unofficial kickoff to the holiday season in the city of Cold Lake is the Santa Claus Parade. And that's happening in Cold Lake on Friday, November the 30th, and it starts at six o'clock. A big event, and uh, right now the city of Cold Lake is looking for uh, people, businesses, whoever wants to throw a float in, decorate it up, and get into the Christmas spirit. You can get your floats registered. Uh, you can go online at uh, coldlake.com or give them a call at 780 639-6403. Now, the night of the parade, it is a lot of fun without a doubt. There's uh, free hot dogs and hot chocolate provided by ATCO. 
and uh, also hot chocolate and popcorn provided by Broad Street Properties. And in addition to that, from uh, 6 to 7 p.m. during the parade, uh, ourselves at Boom 95.3, we're going to get into the Christmas spirit. Not only will we have a float in the parade, but we'll be cranking out the holiday tunes as well. So November 30th, mark it on your calendars for the annual Santa Claus Parade in the city of Cold Lake. Now, we're going to look ahead to the month of December. Uh, over in our neck of the woods, over in Bonneville, another big event. And this is the second time that uh, Bonneville has hosted this. But uh, the World Junior A Challenge, big hockey tournament, is back in Bonneville December 9th through the 16th. And you're going to see teams from all across Canada. Uh, I think there's like a Canada West team, Canada East. There's teams from the United States. Uh, there's teams from Russia. All over the place. It's a great event, great tournament, really good hockey, and really affordable to go check it out. Tickets are on sale right now. Uh, you can get those online, hockeycanada.ca slash tickets. You can also stop by the Centennial Center in Bonneville and get your ticket packages there. If you want an event featured on what's happening, easiest way to get a hold of me, shoot me an email, pete at boom953.ca. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. All right, well, my next guest is a woman entrepreneur here in the Border City. A very cool story. Uh, she is the uh, creator and owner of Spirit Collab. Beautiful, beautiful jewelry. Uh, so I want to thank you for joining our uh, show tonight. Thank you. Um, so you have an interesting story. You just kind of started this venture, and uh, it kind of happened by accident. So if you want to start off with telling us how you started this business. Sure. So... Um, I hurt my back in January and I got bored of not being able to move a whole lot so in some frustration I ordered some beads. I'd always been attracted to crystals and beads so it was up my alley but um, I actually didn't think I was going to sell anything. I just wanted to create something mm -hmm. so it ended up blossoming into a cute little business. So. Yeah, and um, how, how has it been going so far? Obviously, there's been a lot of support from uh, local businesses. So what's that support been like? It's been amazing. I love to support local um, stores. So the support in return has been really nice. Um, I currently have a few wholesale accounts with um, local people in Lloydminster. So that's been really fun, aside from my Instagram hustle that I yeah. do. So. Yeah. Nice. And uh, I just want to talk about, obviously, your jewelry is aesthetically beautiful, but there's a little bit of a deeper meaning and into, uh, you know, the materials and the beads that you use. So can you talk a little bit about uh, what it really means when you're getting one of these bracelets? Sure. So I create, I intuitively create them for a specific purpose. And um, each crystal kind of carries a certain property or vibration. There's a lot more science behind that, believe it or not, but I'll just leave that today. <laughs> um, so anyway, take rose quartz, for example. It is a stone of the heart. It helps you to um, embrace all matters of love. Um, there's black stones that can help you be grounded and just um, kind of like level, I guess, if you want to say. So yeah, I basically create them to help people in just matters of their life. I want to inspire people to um, embrace their spirituality, whatever that may look like, and um, just work on themselves. Yeah, so it really is more than a piece of jewelry, yes. even though they're absolutely beautiful. And you brought some of your Christmas pieces here, uh, so you can tell us a little bit about these, and then where can people purchase these? Sure. So. Um, I've created a few more than what I brought, but this is just a small sample. I chose a lot of agates this Christmas season. They're kind of very like grounding and nurturing kind of stones. So this is tree agate. Um, oh, this is my blue lace agate and blue goldstone. Um, and then this is a quartz. So it's a really good like amplifier, but also a protector. The Christmas season's kind of crazy. Mm. So this one is a really good one to be wearing the entire time. And um, so you'll be able to find most of the Christmas ones at Simple Farmer. They're going to be mostly oh, exclusively awesome. there. And a few at Home Hardware. And then the rest, some are at the Haley Hair Boutique in town here. And just recently, I signed a wholesale account with, Killa with a lady in Killam oh, wow. at the Tea & Co Salon there. 
So awesome. Uh, so and these would make great Christmas gifts. So if anyone's uh, looking for uh, those gifts for someone special, and uh, you are also hosting workshops. So you're going to be uh, partnering with the Home Hardware here in Lloydminster. So uh, where where can people? You don't have any uh, dates right now, but uh, they're coming up. So where can people go to? Uh, sign up for these workshops if you keep an eye on home hardware's accounts their social media accounts or their websites you can sign up for the workshops there we're working on a crystal course to learn like the basics about crystals and um, a few ones for about kind of just like energy in general uh, starting in january so Awesome. Yeah. Wow, it's very cool. Well, we're unfortunately out of time, but I could talk about this all day. Uh, if Me you too. would like any of the jewelry, definitely check out one of the retailers or check out her Instagram. All the info is on there as well. Taken away, I want to thank you so much for coming in and uh, sharing this with us today. Thanks for having me. So warm-ups are about a couple minutes away here in Cold Lake at the Imperial Oil uh, Place uh, Arena uh, between the Cold Lake Wings and the West Sound Admirals. Now we learned a little bit more about this league here and how the West, uh, the West Sound Admirals have come to like uh, not only this arena but coming up to Canada as well. Puck drop here tonight is going to be 7:30. Uh, last night the the Wings unfortunately lost 11 to 4. So looking to make that bounce back game here tonight. And West Sound won their game against Meadow Lake last night as well. So uh, the. This starts at 7.30, but let's head back into the studio. Thank you for joining us, and have a good weekend. All right, it's the it's the big time right now. We announced the winner of the Pets My of the Day, time. or Pet of the Week, I guess, <laughs> as we announce the winner here on Primetime Local News. The winner will get a $50 gift card, and let's see that Drum roll? board. No, well, there's something new that we added oh. special to this, uh, to this well one. Well, then. Uh, Oh, we look at that. We have the drum roll. And, and it's like a roulette. Let's and see. Uh, the winner is Flint. Oh, submitted Flint. by Kathy. So congratulations. Flint looks like he needs it. He looks sad. Yeah, he's very <laughs> sad. He definitely needs that gift card. Uh, so congratulations, Kathy. We will be in contact with you in, in terms of picking up your pet pad gift certificate. Thank That's you to everybody awesome. who submitted their pets. And again, if you want your chance to That's win, great. make sure you send in those pictures to us at Primetime Local News because it could be the next winner. You never know.